Hello everyone this is part 4 of what if Naruto was betrayed and planned it all, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. The Naruto had been sitting in his cell for two weeks now and was surprised to have a visitor that didn't want him dead. He had seen the man before during the few times he had stood in front of the council. This was Danzo. He was standing there with his hands folded over his can. He was also the only one there besides Naruto. What do you want old man? Danzo's visible eye narrowed at the comment but that was his only visible reaction. I'm here to make you an offer. What offer is that? You are a Jinchuriki. They have always been the most powerful weapons for a ninja village to have. I would like for you to come work for me at a secret division of the Anbu called Root. In exchange you are no longer in this cell and will not be executed. Tempting offer. Yes, I think that under different circumstances I would accept your offer. However, things have been set in motion and I can no longer stop them. I'm going to have to decline your offer. You're making a mistake. No, you made a mistake. You thought that I wasn't right where I want to be and that will cost you. Danzo's eye narrowed further. What game are you playing? What do you get from being in this cell, about to be executed? Wait and see Danzo, wait and see. Naruto said before Danzo turned and disappeared. Break. Naruto was currently sitting in his cell. It had been a little more than a month since they had locked him up in that cell, and he was starting to become impatient. He was sitting there, tapping his fingers rhythmically before releasing a heavy sigh. Hey, Abiki, Naruto said, getting the man's attention. He had been posted there to watch Naruto in case anything happened. What do you want now? About an hour ago Naruto had bugged him with stupid questions non-stop. He was bored and that was fun. I was wondering when my execution will happen. I'm starting to become impatient. Most people try to postpone the death. You want it sooner. No. I simply want this charade over with. What charade? Before Naruto could answer him they both heard someone getting closer. It was Sunad and Jiraiya. Abiki stood up to greet them but he was ignored. Once they were facing Naruto Sunad spoke. Naruto Uzumaki, your execution is in an hour. Any last words? Finally, I was growing impatient, as I have already told Abiki. As for my last words I think that I should address the audience with them. After all, they are who the words are for but you have finally graced me with your presence for the first time since you locked me up. I guess you didn't take my offer of mercy too seriously did you? Whatever, how could you do anything to kill us all with you about to die yourself? You're going to regret not taking me seriously, Naruto said as a crazed look appeared in his eyes. I promise you this, I'm going to burn this village to the ground. So many people will die because you didn't take my word seriously. Kiba, Shikamaru, your precious counsel. They will have their heads on pikes, but only after they watch their clans sorted, and they themselves are tortured. Only when they beg for death will I grant it. Sakura, I'll make sure her and Ino are dropped in a prison in Awagakur, wearing nothing but their headbands and chakra suppresses. Of course, Ino will also watch as I kill her clan. You people think you're invincible. You lady Sunad, I will personally keep my foot on your windpipe until you start to turn purple. Then I will release my foot just enough for you to inhale a large breath, right before I crush your windpipe and leave you there. The last thought that will go through your mind will be you wondering how you could have screwed up so much, as you watch your village burn. I will raise this place to the ground and no one will be able to stop me. Naruto said, looking absolutely hysterical at this point. When he was done his face quickly recomposed into one of calm and collectiveness. Jiraiya was the first to get over his shock at how insane the boy sounded. You really are one crazy bastard aren't you? It wasn't a question. I might have been in here too long, but sometimes the only way to stay sane is to look out though those bars and say, is everyone out there nuts? Naruto said, grinning again. Sunad gave one last look of disgust before turning and leaving with Jiraiya in tow. So, things are finally moving along. Naruto said. Before Ibiki could shake what had just happened Naruto asked, would you like to hear a song? Ibiki didn't respond. I guess I'll sing it anyways. The beat was slow and calm but had an ominous undertone to it as Naruto tapped the stone with it. Please tell me, where I could be. 
I can't tell, cause I can't see. Touch is lit, and I find I'm alone. Expected, as nothing's set in stone. Long ago, I found myself stuck here. Now my heart, is clouded with fear. Find my way, through this deadly maze. Stow away, preserve or raise. As I've learned, and as I've known. Nothing is set in stone. I remember well, when they left me to die. A stab in the back, a cut of all ties. Please tell me, who you could be. I can't tell, cause I can't see. I'm not blind, I have my sense of vision. But my eyes, are clouded with darkness. Long ago, I found myself stuck here. Now I'm just, a confused creature. Find your way, through this puzzle. Don't lose hope, or darkness will control. As I've learned, and as I've known. Nothing is set in stone. I remember well, the last day we shone. They left me cause, nothing's set in stone. Naruto finally came to a stop. Well, that's all. Oh well, I guess it's time for things to start moving along. Break. Naruto was being led out to his execution by Sunad and Jiraiya, yet he couldn't stop smiling. I'm prepared for this. It can't be stopped anyways. Not even the very handsome writer of this story. Naruto's smile got bigger at the thought. Someone writing all of this out as it happens. Ridiculous. Naruto thought to himself before Jiraiya noticed the smile. What are you smiling about brat? You're about to die. Simple toad. I have a surprise for everyone. Whatever. When they finally got outside they had Naruto climb up a small tower. When they finally got up Naruto was able to see the most of the village had gathered to see him executed. Naruto didn't have time to marvel at this before he was pushed to his knees. He could still see almost all the crowd, as he was close to the edge. He looked around him and saw that apart from Sunad and Jiraiya, there was a stereotypical executioner, Hood and all. Sunad spoke up loud enough for all to hear. Now, we are all going to watch his head roll. But first, he has asked that you all hear his final words. Considering his service in retrieving Sasuke Uchiha I doubt any of you will object. Silence followed. She turned to Naruto. Speak while you have the chance. Naruto looked out over the sea of people and saw a few familiar faces. He saw most of the Kanoa 12. He could see the looks of hatred and disgust behind the eyes of Sakura, Ino, Kiba, and Choji. He saw the look of confusion, hatred, and guilt in the eyes of Lee. He could see indifference and boredom on Shikamaru's face. He didn't even see Tenten. When his eyes landed on some of the sensei out in the crowd he saw varying things. Kakashi held disappointment in his eyes. Kurenai looked like she wanted to be the executioner. Asuma looked sorry that he wasn't doing anything to stop it. Guy looked disappointed that such an unyouthful thing was being done to Naruto. His friends all had the same extreme determination in their eyes. He could see it in Shino, Hanata, Neji, and Konohamaru and his team. Sasuke and Anko weren't there. He already knew they wouldn't be. He could see the Ichiraku family standing there, looking like they wanted to kill whoever was responsible for this. Naruto smiled. So many people cared that he didn't care about those who hated him. It's time. Everyone in Kanoa, I have fought for you and this is where I have ended up. I have things to say to many of you. Sakura, I tried to be your friend and now you look at me with hatred. Kiba and Choji, I tried to show you how wrong you were about judging people, but it would appear I failed. Kakashi, you once said that those who abandon their teammates are worse than trash. Yet there you stand, looking at me with disappointment. Naruto smirked. Obito and Rin would be disappointed. He loved seeing the shock and anger on Kakashi's face. My friends, just stand by and enjoy the show I have for you. You see, you have yet to capture me. As a matter of fact, I should be two days from Awagakur by now. Naruto smirked even more. He loved their confusion. Back in Wave I started experimenting with the cage bunch and jutsu. I was trying to make them last longer. I won't go into details, but it worked. Granted it eats chakra like crazy. For me I was lucky to keep the clone for as long as I did. He loved every moment as understanding dawned on most of them. It's amazing what you can do with them when you have chakra reserves like mine. They were too shocked to stop him as he stood up. I will be back, and when I return I will raise this village to the ground. All of you will pay the debt you now owe me. I promise you, that Naruto Namikaze Uzumaki will return and slaughter all of you. You all have a debt to pay, and I will make sure it will be paid in full. He yelled before bursting into a large explosion of smoke. 
Everyone in the crowd was speechless for all of five seconds before it tuned to pandemonium as they all started to panic. Naruto was loose and claimed he would one day return. Not only that but he claimed his name to be Namikas. What was going on could only be described as pure chaos. It went exactly as planned. Hanata, Shino and the others shared a look before taking off. No one noticed them in the chaos. They didn't know this was going to happen, but they knew someone who did and had to get to the eastern gate. Sunad was now shouting order at the Anbu to head out and catch up with him. She did not want him escaping. It took all of five minutes for her to get most of them to move out. Before she could move an inch one of the barrier team appeared before her. Lady Sunad, we have a problem. We were watching the sensory sphere and saw a small group of ripples at the east gate. Before we could react it looked like a paper bomb had gone off on the sphere in the same location. Then the entire sphere just collapsed. The other two from the detection division and the five from the interception division are checking it out right now, but one thing is for certain. The barrier is gone. Soon it looked like someone had just called her old before smacking her in the face. The shock she was experienced would give lesser people a heart attack. Break. Naruto was currently running through the woods. They had betrayed him and now he had to hope that it worked. It had to. If they found out that they captured a clone before he was ready then it wouldn't be long before they caught up with him. But he couldn't run anymore. He was already tired from the fight with Sasuke and just used all but the very last of his chakra to make that clone. He couldn't keep going. He crashed into a tree, hugging it for dear life, trying not to fall down. He failed at that task as his hand stopped gripping the tree to cushion his fall. Everything went dark before he even hit the ground. Break. Naruto started to come back to reality and attempted to clear his mind. Before he could fully wake up his memories came back to him and he shot up. Pain shot through him as he did so. He let out a small groan and laid back down slowly. He quickly cleared his mind as best he could and looked around while gathering his bearings. He still had his pants on, but his shirt was gone and replaced with bandages over his chest. He was in a normal-sized room in what appeared to be a cabin. The walls were relatively undecorated, apart from a painting of a small cabin on a lake and in the woods with a mountain in the background. There was little furniture apart from a nightstand and a small writing desk. However, Naruto's eyes were drawn to the door as he saw it open. There in the doorway was an old man wearing simple black pants, a grey shirt, and a black robe over them. The most noticeable feature about him was his faded red hair that fell down between his shoulder blades and framed his face. He had a calm and almost wise look. He walked over to Naruto before speaking in a manner that spoke volumes about him. It was calm and yet felt like he could have a yelling match with the Hokage if he wanted to. Good. You're finally awake. How long have I been sleeping? A little more than a day. Any other person would have been out far longer with the injuries you had. Though, most of them, like you would have, had your wounds not healed at such an astonishing rate. Yeah, guess I'm just lucky like that. I would think that someone with your burden would consider yourselves a little less than lucky. What do you mean? First let me ask about this patch I found on you. The mask said before holding up the patch that had been on Naruto's pant leg. Where did you get it? I was told that it belonged to my mother. And who was your mother? Why do you want to know? He turned it over to show the engraving on the back. It had two sets of initials on it. They were both KU. Because this belonged to my daughter. Well, based on your hair, can I assume that you are the father of Kushina Uzumaki? So, I have met my grandson then. Yes, I believe you have. Well, now that I know you are an Uzumaki that explains why you hold the QB. How do you know about that? The burden of being the QB Jinchuriki has been somewhat of an Uzumaki tradition for a long time. You mean how my mother was brought to Kanoa to be the next one? Yes. I was never told what happened to her. After the destruction of Azushio I came here and discreetly tried to find her. I knew that if I made a scene that people would come after me. However I was never able to find her until after she became the wife of the Yondime, and I take it that is where you got your hair. When I knew she was safe I decided to keep my distance until I was needed. I knew she was pregnant but believed you died in the QB attack. You can blame that on the Sandime and his law for that one. No one was allowed to talk about the QB in the village. It was meant to keep the next generation from hating me. We see how well that worked out. So do you mind telling me how I got here? 
I was out on a hike when I came across your fight with the Uchiha. I watched and when you took him back I followed. I saw what they did to you and heard that they out you in prison. I also saw you take off and found you passed out under a tree. I took you back here and treated your wounds, though I didn't need to do much seeing as how they were healing so quickly. Oh, I love shadow clones. Yes, how did you get it to last so long and withstand that damage? Without going into specifics, I experimented with the jutsu and discovered a way to maintain a link. Through this link I can feed the clone more chakra as it's needed. There are drawbacks but I can also pass ideas and thoughts to the clone in real time. One of the drawbacks is that once I start getting lower on chakra it will start to make moving more difficult as I try to focus. Eventually I won't be able to walk. These effects are only temporary until I regain my strength. Amazing. Granted, I could only see someone with the chakra reserves of a Jinchuriki being able to do so. So then, if you don't mind me asking, what do I call you? Grandfather. If you want. However, my name is Kamaji Uzumaki if you want to call me by my name. Boiler Giza. My mother named me that after a character from her favorite book, Spirited Away. Alright, I'll call you Kamaji for now and see what happens. For right now though, I want to go back to sleep. Naruto said before passing back out. Break. Naruto had used the memories of the clone to develop a plan for giving him some much needed muscle. He had the clone make a deal with one of its neighboring prisoners and was about to head out to follow through with his side of the bargain. Hey, Kamaji, do you have any cloths I can borrow? Naruto asked before explaining his plan. Sure, but are you sure you want to go with a scythe? Yes, if anyone recognizes my sword style there, there'll be problems. So how do you intend on getting them all out in time? You will have a small window before most of the village's shinobi get there. Shadow clones. Won't it stick out when someone uses as many clones as you'll need? No, I learned another way to deploy them. No one will know what they are and that will be useful to me. I can make them appear to emerge from my body. In all actuality I learned how to make them live up to their name. I can make them emerge from my shadows. The Nadaim had. All right, be careful. Kamaji said before Naruto took off. He was now wearing black, featureless pants, a shirt designed the same way, and a large black trench coat that was open and had a hood that was up. This hood kept the shadows over most his face while a small cloth covered the rest of it and had a device meant to distort one's voice on the inside. He kept the scythe on his back for the time being. He was also currently hanged into a taller version of himself so that the cloths fit him. He was still only 13. Sneaking into the walls of the prison was easy enough for him. They were trying to keep people in, not out. When he busted in he quickly deployed his clones, took care of Ibiki, and made sure all of the sound shinobi were out. Getting out was more difficult, but having so many people charging at once made things easier. The fact that their chakra was no longer being suppressed also helped. Once they were out of the prison Naruto found Tayuya and told her to keep her end of the bargain. He then quickly escaped the Anbu by using his secret tunnels he had built over time before returning to the cabin. I trust everything went well. Kamaji asked. Yes. Heard of but not difficult. I have a question for you. And that would be. Can you seal a building into a scroll? Yes. The seals need to be specially made for it, but yes. Well, I can't work on seals that complex yet. I need you to do something for me. And what would that be? I need you to keep your face hidden and seal my home in a scroll until I can find a place for it later. All right, I think I can do that. Am I to understand that most of the world's remaining Uzumaki artifacts, or other related items, are in there? Yes. Naruto responded before telling him where it was. I'll be back in a while. Kamaji said before putting on his hooded traveling cloak and leaving. Break. Naruto had opted to stay hanged and covered by Kamaji's traveling cloak any time he went into Kanoa. As it turned out, the cabin was just within the barrier that covered Kanoa and the surrounding training grounds. He was on his way to handle Karen. To most people she died during the Chunin exams. However, after they were over Naruto had her staying in a small rented room until he could figure out what to do. He was just happy she hadn't done anything stupid when he was imprisoned. He needed to handle the situations that everyone would cause over this. Gara, Karen, and his other friends would no doubt raise chaos over his imprisonment. When he got to where she had been living these past few weeks he knocked on the door and waited a few seconds before she answered the door. 
when she did he removed the hood just enough for her to see his face. She immediately let him inside. Naruto, how are you here? Did you escape? No, I managed to make them think they have me imprisoned. I won't go into details on how I did it just yet. However, I need you to do something for me. What is it? Tonight I want you to meet me here. He said as he handed her a piece of paper telling her how to get to the cabin. Go ahead and get together what you have. I intend on making this village suffer someday. For now I'm going to fix a mistake made a long time ago. What do you mean? You'll see eventually. For now just do as I instruct and things will turn out fine. I planned for this after all. Naruto said before giving her a smile. I have other things I need to do in order to keep everything on track. I'll talk more with you back at the cabin. He said before turning to leave. Just be careful. I'll see you later. Naruto said before walking out the door. He was now headed to where the sand siblings and their sensei had been staying. When he got there he could hear glass breaking. Gara was no doubt pissed about what was happening to his friend. Naruto sighed. This is going to be fun. Naruto thought before knocking on the door. The door was almost ripped off its hinges when Gara opened it. Naruto could see the other three occupants of the room cowering in the corner in a comical anime fashion as Gara's shadow loomed over them. You had better be here to tell me my friend has been released or this will not end well for you. Gara said. Naruto smirked before lifting his hood. I have something better. The look on Gara's face was priceless. Can I come in? I wasn't set free, so being out in the open is dangerous for me. Naruto said, his smirk turning into a broad smile. Gara simply stepped to the side to let him in. Naruto noticed the other occupants sighing in relief that the rampage was over for the time being. I can't stay for long. I can come by tomorrow but for today I'm trying to keep people from doing anything stupid. However, I need you to calm down so you don't ruin relations between Kanoa and your village. You need them for the time being. They don't need you as much. They all nodded, knowing he was right. For the moment their village needed Kanoa's aid to keep things in order. However, they were all interested in how Naruto was here if they didn't release him. Naruto, how are you here if they haven't released you? We have yet to hear anything about you escaping. We would have done something to help you. Gara said. They currently have a clone in their possession. I won't bother explaining everything right now, but I want you to go back to Sunagakur soon. Simply wait there until I contact you again. I have everything planned out and so long as you wait it should all turn out fine. They all nodded at his words. Naruto, Kankuro spoke up. I wanted to thank you for helping our brother. Of course, Naruto said before turning to leave. When you leave just wait for me to contact you. Soon enough everything will go just the way I want it. Naruto said before bidding them farewell. He left and was now on his way to make sure everyone else would keep from causing problems. However, with them he needed to be careful. He couldn't meet most of them where they were staying without problems. The Huger and Avarain compounds were not without some level of security. The same could go for the Sarutobi. He needed to find a way to get to them without giving himself away. He decided that a good first step would be to go to Ichiraku. When he got there he wasn't disappointed, as Hanata and Shino were the only people eating there at the moment. He sat down next to them and ordered a miso ramen. Then he spoke. So what do you people think of this Naruto Uzumaki? What do you think about all this going on? Hanata was the first to speak up. I think that what they're doing to him is wrong. After everything he's done, they took what they could and now they're killing him off for no good reason. Well, I can't argue with you there. However, it's not like you can stop it. Naruto responded. We know that already. Shino said. Anko tried to break him out and got sent on a mission that's supposed to take at least a month. They did this so that they could keep her skill but also keep her out of the way. If a special Jonan couldn't do anything, what do you hope to accomplish? Shut up. Ayami said. Who do you think you are, speaking like that? Well, what if I told you that he isn't actually in prison like everyone thinks? What are you talking about? Hanata asked. Within the next couple of months a specific event is going to happen pertaining to Naruto. When it does, meet me at the Eastern Gate with everyone you can trust. Naruto said before standing up. Hold on. Who are you? Shino asked. A friend that can help. Just don't do anything stupid. He left some money on the counter, even though he never ate his ramen, before leaving. Who was that? Hanata asked. 
I'm not sure, but I have to wonder. Shino responded as some of his bugs crawled from the ground and back onto his body. Break. Naruto had spent the last hour and a half walking towards the Valley of the End. He had been forced to sneak out through one of the four main gates to avoid detection via the barrier. It had taken some time, but he had finally reached what he was looking for. In the middle of this clearing was a small desert with white spike protruding from the ground across the entire expanse of the clearing. One in particular caught his eye. It had a pale-skinned man with white hair and a lance-like protrusion coming from his arm. His name was Kimimuro. He was not in his curse mark form and was hanging limply there, dead. Naruto noticed something off. He walked in between the spikes and got closer before using his chakra to walk up next to the body. He was right, there was something off. His curse mark was missing. When Naruto had met him the mark was right below his neck. Now it was missing. A mark like this doesn't just disappear. I'm going to need to look into this. I was already going to take the body just in case, but now I have reason to. Naruto thought before making quick work of Kimimuro's bones. Once the body was out there was still some bone encasing parts of him but it didn't matter, as Naruto sealed his body in a scroll. You said that this was all to repay Orokimaru because he gave you a purpose. Your debt has been paid and now I wonder. Naruto thought before leaving the clearing. Break. Naruto was currently standing in a large clearing far from the village. His plan was to see what he still had access to. He had several clones fan out across a large area to make sure no one could see what he was about to do. Quickly he bit his thumb before flashing through hand seals and pushing his hands to the ground. Within seconds he was once again standing on top of the chief toad. What do you want Naruto? I want to talk with you. Naruto said with a knowing smirk. He jumped of the toad and landed in front of him before turning around and facing him. I want to know if Jiraiya has talked to you recently. No, he hasn't. Why? Because I was betrayed. Break. It was currently the day of Naruto's execution and he was standing in the plaza waiting for the clone to be brought out. He had made sure that Kamaji had sealed his home and the Uzumaki mask temple in scrolls and had everything packed into smaller scrolls for transportation. He then Kamaji and Karen waiting for him at the eastern gate. During their time in the cavern the three Uzumaki had grown closer together and had talked about their lives. Kamaji had even told them about how wonderful Azushiogaku had been. They waited there a few moments before he saw his friends and everyone else pour in for what was going to happen. He had long since talked to Sakura and the others. It made him sick what they thought of him. The only one of the Kanoa 12 who didn't hate him, apart from his friends, was Lee. Lee didn't know what to think. He hated the QB, but wasn't sure what to think of its warden. Then the show started. As the clone was forced to go up to his execution point Naruto turned and went to wait at the eastern gate. When he got there he found Kamaji and Karen wearing traveling cloaks just like him. Each one had sealing scrolls strapped to the insides of their cloaks. They stood there waiting for a few minutes before noticing a small group headed towards them. Hanata and Shino were at the front of the group. They were the people Naruto had seen in the crowd. The group was Konohamaru and his team, Neji, Shino, and Hanata. He could trust so few. He would need to come back for Anko though. When they got closer Neji was the first to speak up. Who are you, and how did you know that would happen? I can't tell you right now. Follow me. We're going to go up the road to an inn. Once we're there I will tell you. You can follow me or you can stay here. He said before turning and walking away. The group quickly followed him. However, he only got a few yards outside the gate before turning around and placing his hand outward palm out. It looked like he was placing it against an invisible wall. The air was distorted momentarily before it stopped and looked like glass shattering. There. Now let's keep moving. Naruto said before turning to keep going. He and the group didn't get far before seven shinobi landed in front of them, blocking their paths. Are you the one who destroyed the barrier? One of them asked. The fact that that was what the man had done when distorting the air shocked the group following him, apart from the two other Uzumaki he had been living with for the past few weeks. They had already known what he was going to do. The only thing they didn't know was what he was going to do once they had left Kanoa. Unfortunately for you, yes I was. Naruto said before unsealing his sword. It took little time, and little resistance, before Naruto had dispatched them all. They were all either dead or bleeding out and about to die. 
Those that were dying he delivered a coup de grace by swiftly decapitating them. Naruto had simply caught them off guard and acted too quickly for them to act. He hated needing to kill, but he didn't have a choice. At least his anger at the village dulled the pain. Now, let's keep moving. Break. Naruto was currently sitting down in a chair with his friends in front of him. He quickly pulled off his hood and enjoyed every moment of the shocked expressions. I am Naruto Nami Kazuzumaki, son of the Yondime. I was never imprisoned. They always had a clone in their possession. I have been planning for things like this for quite some time. I can't go into details, but I would like it if you could join me. Konohamaru was the first to speak. Wait, you're the son of the Yondime. Naruto nodded. Well, that answers all of my questions. So, what do you say? You can guarantee that Shino and I will come with you. Hanata said, Shino nodded in agreement. Well, what about the rest of you? The rest of them shared a look. Neji spoke up. I think it would be best if I stayed. I might hate everyone now, but if I can change some of their opinions of you that might work in your favor. I agree. Konohamaru spoke up. As the Sandime's grandson I should also be able to influence some things. Not to mention Asuma. He and a few of the sensei who were against what they did to you could help with making things easier. Yes, that might be. If it takes long enough for me to come back, you might become Hokage. Then I would have no need to destroy the place. Alright, I will be coming back for some people. Anko being one of them. Yeah, Ayami and her father wanted me to tell you something. Hanata said, they W wanted me to tell you that when you find a new place for the time being, you should tell them so that they can take their business there. Neji, tell them thank you for me. However, you all need to get back soon. This area will be crawling with whatever Anbu Suna didn't send towards it were like they think I'm going. I should also get going. My other traveling companions and I need to leave soon. Neji spoke up. Yes, who are they anyways? They are part of the Uzumaki clan. The fact that my mother was from this clan is how I was able to remove the barrier. I had my clones working on a massive project not too long ago in Fuinjutsu. He told them how the Uzumaki clan was scattered and the other two traveling with him were part of it, just like him. He also told them about his mother and his father, the Kyubi attack, as well as the Uzumaki clan's prowess in the art of Fuinjutsu. He had opted out of telling him what his mother and father had been able to compile at the last minutes of their lives. During the last few minutes of their lives they had written a scroll telling him that someone claiming to be Madara Uchiha was behind the attack. He figured that leaving that out for the time being would be better. As they started leaving Neji stopped. Naruto, I hope that one day we can stand on the same side of the battlefield. When you come back, you can expect me to stand by your side. Naruto thanked him and bid him farewell. Naruto went to the back exit with Hanata and Shino following him. When they got there they found Karen and Kamaji waiting. All right, we need to keep moving. This area will have the Anbu all over it soon. I managed to throw them off by telling them that I was headed to Iwa. It should take them quite a while to realize they were duped. Once it hits night we'll find an inn and try to stay hidden as we keep moving. Naruto said. The others agreed without a second thought. Naruto was the one who came up with the plans. He had proven that already when he had managed to trick all of Kanoa with only a few words. Break. Neji and the others were headed back to Kanoa when they ran into the Anbu. One of them with a rat mask spoke up. What are doing here? Neji quickly came up with an excuse. We saw some suspicious people leaving the village after making the air distort. We went to check it out because everyone else was busy with Naruto escaping. However, even with M. Byakugan, they managed to get away. The Anbu seemed skeptical but didn't see any reason for him to lie. Get back to the village and report. We're going to keep looking and try to find them. The rat mask said before they all took off. Break. Later that night Naruto and his group were sitting in a room at an inn. While Karen and Kamaji didn't need to do much to keep themselves hidden, Naruto knew that he, Shino, and Hanata needed to keep their identities concealed or there would be problems. While Naruto's hair was naturally spiky, it didn't take much effort to brush it into a straighter position with some of it sticking out at places. When that was done he had dye his hair a dark red. He had figured that this fit him more. He had also used a small amount of makeup to cover his whisker-like birthmarks. He was currently sticking to his black shirt, black pants, and traveling cloak. 
he had destroyed his Hittai 8 during his month back in Kanoa and had his traveling companions do the same to theirs. While he had done this Hanata had dyed her hair white and used contacts they were able to buy when they were passing through the town they were staying in, the contacts left her with eyes that were now brown instead of her featureless white. However, it left her with a white pupil that gave her a different and exotic appearance. She had also added her own brown traveling cloak to her current attire. Shino had the least change. He had opted to keep his gases and traded his old jacket for a dark grey one that now went down to his knees, had a hood, and had long sleeves that left almost none of his hands uncovered. However, he decided to keep his hands in his pockets most of the time. His shirt was now black and came up to cover his nose and below, and came down almost to his ankles. What you could see of his pants were black and concealed all but his feet, which were concealed by his shoes. The less that people saw of him, the less they would recognize him. Now that they had made sure it was almost impossible to be recognized they got ready to rest. They were going to be traveling most of tomorrow. Before going to sleep Naruto created a clone. Go tell them we're on our way. Give us a few more days and we'll be there. The Bunshin gave his salute before taking off. Naruto laid down and drifted off to sleep. Break. They had been traveling for the past few days and had little to no trouble. They had run into a few bandits but they were of little consequence. However, Naruto now had them where he wanted to be. They were now in a small village at the southernmost point of the land of hot water. Naruto already knew where to meet with Tayuya since the Bunshin had discussed when and where to meet him. Some of the sound nin were staring to become impatient but the sound four had kept them in line. When the group got into the village they walked to a small stand where Tayuya was supposed to be waiting for them. They walked inside and saw her sitting there. It's about time you got here. What took you so long? Tayuya said while standing up. She had nearly killed his clone when it had gotten there a few days ago. She had actually not seen who she was talking to back when she was imprisoned in Kanoa. The clone had told her he would be coming with a few people that could be trusted. It took some time for me to get away from Kanoa. Anyways, could you lead me to the rest of them? Sure, she said walking back out the stand. The sound nin were too numerous to stay in the small village and had to set up a camp outside of it. It had taken the Naruto clone a while to find them. Now it simply took them a few minutes of walking through the woods to get to the camp. Naruto was amazed at the number of sound nin that had followed along. Tayuya quickly took him through the now gathering crowd to the center of the camp so that he could meet with the rest of the sound four. He could see the question in all of their eyes. Who are these people? Why are we surrounded with sound nin? Hanata asked. I helped them get here. I'm hoping that this will give us some extra allies. Naruto responded in a whisper. It took a few moments but Naruto wasn't disappointed to see the rest are the three from Tayuya's elite team. They're here, was all Tayuya said. Are you telling me that we've been waiting here all this time for them? Kidomaru asked. Naruto decided that now was the time to get into the conversation. Yes. My group and I are the ones you have been waiting on. Why is that? Sakan asked. Because I'm the one who broke you out of that Kanoa prison and saved you from the literal chopping block. This shut up everyone who could hear them. Not to mention that a few sentences from me has most of their forces scrambling around like idiots. And I was able to bring down the sensory barrier around that village. These all lead me to the last reason. I'm here to offer you all new lives. Naruto said before standing on top of a rock and turning to address the shinobi in front of him. How do all of you like being out of those cells that Kanoa had you staying in? Naruto asked. His answer was a collection of small murmurs in the crowd. I was the one who got you out of there, and now I'm here to offer you all a new home where you can still live as shinobi as you want to or as civilians if you wish. I intend on awakening the home of my clan so that I can correct a mistake made a long time ago. Kamaji's face turned to one of shock. This was why they were so close to the land of whirling tides. Naruto intended to resurrect Izushiogaku. I, Naruto Nami Kazuzumaki, son of the fourth Hokage and his wife Kushina Uzumaki, and the man about to rule Izushiogaku, will create something new out of this world. However, I need people behind my cause to make it succeed. For helping you, all I ask is that you give me a chance. Why should we join you? One of the random voices in the crowd asked. Well, you could go back to Orokimaru. But do you really think that he cares? He could have gotten you all out. In case you all forgot, he has a jutsu that allows him to merge into the ground. 
To him you are nothing more than replaceable tools. They knew it was true. They couldn't argue with the logic of it. So I ask that you help me forge our own path, together. I ask that you stand beside me as we do this, so that everyone else will follow. Then Tayuya spoke up. She had her arms folded in front of her and looked smug. I for one agree with the fool. Orokimaru left us behind. I say we give him a chance. Naruto turned to look at her, giving a smile. I agree. Jirobo said. We were left behind. With those two backing him it was only a matter of time as most of the group started to agree with him. In the end he had the sound four on his side and all but a few sound junin, and even fewer chunin, walked away. They had decided to leave. Some went back to Orokimaru, and others went to enjoy their freedom from all parties involved. Most of that second group just wanted to go to one of the faraway countries as far away from all this as they could. It was the ones that wanted to return to Orokimaru that Naruto had a problem with. They were the ones he was waiting for. While he told them that they could leave, he had never told them that if they left to rejoin Orokimaru they would never leave the forest alive. Naruto had clones waiting out of hearing range from the camp, waiting for any who wanted to go back to the Sanin. Naruto now had the numbers he needed to start putting things into action. Good. Now that you have all decided to give me a chance, let's get moving. It was still the middle of the day. Make your way to the docks. I will have a ship waiting for us so that we can go to our new home. Before Naruto had left he had also cleaned out his family's accounts and used it to purchase the land of Whirlpool's first ship. Break. Naruto was currently standing on the bow of his new ship. The ship was painted black and had black sails. He had gotten it for a bargain. The legends said it was a ship with black sails that's crewed by the damned, and captained by a man so evil that hell itself spat him back out. The ship was called the Black Pearl. Back to where Naruto was standing. He was currently standing on the bow of the ship with his hands placed against an invisible, yet quite solid, wall. This was the barrier of the land of whirling tides. Kamaji, you're sure you can set it back up without killing everything on the island? Yes, the wave of death spread out from one seal, while the barrier originated from another seal. However, they work on a system. If the killing wave activates so does the barrier. This works to keep out others once the wave is gone. On the other hand, the barrier can be activated without the killing wave going off. Good. Time to right an old wrong. Naruto said before his palms started to glow. The air rippled along the barrier before the entire dome appeared to shatter and disappear. You know, there was never an Azukage because this village was never one of the main five villages. Now, it will become one of the most powerful places on Earth. That is why I will become the first ever Azukage. The first Whirlpool Shadow. The showtime of a new and powerful place. Naruto said before dropping his traveling cloak in the water. He turned and bent down to pick up a folded, white, and soft cloth. He quickly unfolded it and put it on to reveal a short-sleeved long white haori. On its back, in between the shoulders, was the Uzumaki clan symbol with a red outline and black filling it in. Up the spine was the lettering for Shodai Mizukage. Along the bottom were black flame-like motifs. Many of them there thought of the Yondime Hokage as the new cloak billowed around him in the wind. Naruto was right. The world was about to change. Break. A man was currently walking down a small road. The man was dressed completely in white. White pants, white shirt, white robe and a white cloth tied around his robe at the waist. He also had a sword that stuck out. The scabbard was black, the blade, pommel, simple disc guard, and handle were all black. The man seemed to be slightly tanned, with grey eyes, and green hair that fell both down the front of his shoulders and his back down to just above his waist. As he was walking he took notice of two figures up ahead. They seemed to be wearing the same outfit and one seemed to be trying to block out the other who was yelling. They were Kakazu and Hidden. Come on Kakazu. It's been so long since I killed someone. You just did an hour ago. Kakazu responded in a bored tone. Well, let's find a place to stop so I can do it again I need wait, I can kill him. Hidden said, taking notice of the man walking towards them. When the man got closer Hidden took off to try and kill him. Having already heard the Hidden's intentions because of his yelling he stopped. He calmly stretched his arm out away from him with his palm facing hidden. He clenched his fingers so that it looked like he was trying to grab something. The moment hidden got within five feet of the man there was instantly a large pillar of light. The pillar seemed to originate from the man and consumed hidden. 
Kakazu was forced to shield his eyes with his forearm. When everything cleared hidden was gone and the man seemed unchanged aside from being slightly hunched over, sweating, and breathing as if he had just run for several days straight. Kakazu looked around but couldn't see his partner. What did you do to him? The man responded with a calm voice that sounded tired because of his heavy breathing. I killed him. How? I've been trying to find a way to kill him ever since I met him. Nothing worked. Usually when you rip apart all of the atoms that make someone or something up, that object seems to cease existing. I've never heard of someone being able to do that. Kakazu saw the man was tired, but knew that anyone who could kill Hidden so easily should just be left alone. It is a Keke Genkai. It allows me to go in and change the atomic structure of something. It is difficult to focus and tires out its uses rather quickly. Now, since you were trying to kill him, I trust you won't have any trouble letting me by. The man said, regaining his breath and straightening himself. Kakazu narrowed his eyes. He was going to get so much crap for this. He started walking moving to the side of the road to signify he wasn't going to bother him. The man also started walking. Before getting out of hearing range the man spoke. Kakazu, be warned. The world is about to change. The way he said it almost made Kakazu shiver. When Kakazu got to his destination he simply activated the seal so that the boulder would move. When he got inside he took his place among the cloaked figures. They were all there. All except the leader whose face had really been seen. He was represented by a hologram along with a female standing next to him. Where is hidden? The leader asked. He tried to kill a man who took three seconds to literally disintegrate him. It would appear that that can kill him. Kakazu responded. I see, it will be difficult to replace him. And now, to the business of the QB Jinchuriki. Itachi was now paying rapt attention. He had heard something had happened but didn't know what it was yet. It would appear his village tried to have him executed for holding the QB. However, he was able to trick them and get away. He managed to convince them he was heading west, but outspies have confirmed him heading east with four other people. When we start hunting the Jinchuriki again Itachi and Kisum will head east to find and capture him. Other than that our plans are unchanged. For the time being you are dismissed. He said before fading away. Itachi looked calm and stoic as usual. However, on the inside he wanted to kill whoever was responsible for what happened to Naruto. He wanted some answers. Break. Sasuke was finally starting to wake up. He realized he was in a hospital bed. He looked around and saw that the only other person in the room was Neji. Neji, what happened? How long have I been out? He could tell that Naruto stopped him and now he wanted to know what had happened during his unconsciousness. Neji's face hardened. You were asleep for five weeks. This much shocked the Uchiha. As for what happened, due to the fact that Naruto used so much of the QB chakra during the fight in order to stop you he was set up to be executed. You missed it. His execution was a week ago. Sasuke was yelling in his mind now. What? That's not possible. He brought me back like he was supposed to. Wait, Kyubi Chakra. He was a Jinchuriki. What the hell? Wait, he was executed. I missed it. But Neji said it was because of what happened during our fight. If I had listened this wouldn't have happened. I killed him. My friend. He could feel his head and eyes burning. He couldn't move. He couldn't release the breath he was holding. Then Neji spoke up again. I wondered how you would react to that. What I didn't tell you was that he escaped. He's long gone from the village now. Sasuke released the breath he was holding but could still feel the burning. When he got out of here he was going to talk with some people and the conversation was not going to be pleasant for the receivers of his anger. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.